for this video, we're going to be learning how to name oxy salts and how do I identify oxy salts? Remember, oxy salts can be uh, compounds that begin with a metal that is a metal with only one valence, or we can also have metals with uh, two or more valences. Okay, and the anion part is going to be an oxyanion. What is an oxyanion? An oxyanion is a specific uh, cluster of molecules. It's a polyatomic ion that is made up of several components. And one of those components is oxygen. That's why it's called oxyanion, right? So oxyanions usually follow the formula XOX with a specific charge of X. This doesn't mean all of the numbers are the same. This just means they're different. So let's actually modify this a little bit. Uh, Z, we're going to write C here. And here we're going to write Y. So what are some of the values that X can have? In this case, X can be a halogen or any nonmetal particularly, or some specific metal such as manganese, such as chromium. Uh, which are the common ones, or maybe even some metalloids, such as uh, selenium or arsenic, for example. They always have oxygen, and letter C can be a number from 1 all the way up to 4, and Y can be a charge of negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that was a little bit confusing. Let me try again with this little sheet, and again, if this is one value, this is oxygen, this is letter Z, and this is letter Y. An oxyanion is a polyatomic ion, that means it's made out of different amount of atoms that are usually mixed, and it has a negative charge. So let's go into a very specific example. We can have something like chlorine, which is the X, then we have oxygen, and then Z, as I said, Z can be, or letter Z can be one to four, it has uh, three oxygen atoms, and the charge Y can always be minus one, minus two, minus three. So in this case, it's minus one. How do I know this? Because I consulted a chart, an oxidation or a valence chart, that gives me this information. So this is a specific example of an oxyanion. Chlorine, oxygen, three atoms of it, and a uh, negative one charge. There are also other chlorine oxyanions, such as ClO2, ClO, and of course ClO4, right? Let's take another example. We can have uh, oxyanions with phosphorus, PO4, PO3. What are we missing? Negative charge, negative three, negative three. Again, I consulted that from a chart. Uh, we can also have sulfur, SO4, SO3, with a minus two charge. We can also have metallic uh, oxyanions, such as MnO4, which is called permanganate, and permanganate has an oxidation of negative one. We can also have chromate, CrO4 with a, and I'm consulting the chart so that I don't lie to you guys. Chromate has a minus two charge. And we also have dichromate, Cr2O7. And dichromate is actually minus two. So how am I doing this? Uh, we're not, we don't, chemistry teachers, we don't expect you to memorize all of this, and you can always use a chart. It's important to know how to use a chart, so in this case, maybe it'll be out of focus, but basically here we have a, a chart with common anions, and some of them have oxygen in them, so they are actually oxyanions. And what are some of their names? Well, some of their names are, uh, all of them end in either eight or either uh, eight and they might have some additional words associated to them. So um, in this case, for this one, for example, ClO3 is called chlorate. Uh, ClO2 is called chlorite with an I-T-E ending. In this case, ClO4 is going to be called perchlorate. And in this case, ClO is going to be called hypochlorite. 
And in case you notice a trend, as we go less oxygen, it becomes hypo and it becomes ite. As we go higher oxygen, it becomes ate or perchlorate. But for example, these two, that there's only two of them, the higher one, the one that has more oxygen is gonna be ate, making this one phosphate. And the one with less oxygen is gonna be called phosphite. And since there are only two of them, that's it, phosphate and phosphite. Same example, SO4 is going to be sulfate, and that's how we notice that it's an oxyanion, sulfate. And this one with three oxygen atoms is going to be called sulfite. Let's go for another example, and another example would be nitrate and nitrite, which is NO3 and NO2 with a minus one charge. So when we put these with their proper name, their names are actually going to be, again, nitrate because it has more oxygen and nitrite because it has less oxygen okay now when we go back to oxy salts as i told you the metal is a cation and the oxyanion which can be any of these guys or maybe others that you have on the table are going to give you an oxy salt so let's do our whole crisscross thing and remember you don't need to memorize but you should be expected to know a few of them or at least know to find them on the table so let's go with a metal such as, let's start easy, sodium, which has a plus one charge. And we're going to do a simple oxyanion, which is NO3. If we don't know the name, we consult it on the table, and it has a negative one charge. So when we do our crisscross, what are we going to get? One and one. We do not write those numbers because they cancel out, NaNO3. And this becomes, what is the naming style for oxy salts? Metal name plus the name of the anion, name of the oxyanion. So in this case, this is for a metal that has only one valence, and what's gonna be my final name? My final name is gonna be sodium. And if I look on my chart, the name of this whole thing is what? Nitrate. And again, where do I get this from? From a table of oxidation, sodium nitrate. Let's do another quick example. Another quick example would be sodium plus one, NO2 minus one. When we mix it, it's NaNO2. And it's gonna become, again, my anion is sodium. My cation is sodium. Sorry, it's sodium. And when I look at my chart on my oxidation sheet, I'm gonna get the word nitrite. Okay, where did I get that from? From the chart. And that's basically it for this uh, naming of the families. But let's do another example because I, again, watch the video on halloid salts because if we have metals with more than one valence, that's gonna change with the classic and the stock system names. So we're gonna do an example of copper. Copper plus one, copper plus two, mixed with sulfate, which is SO4 minus two, SO4 minus two, so then when we do the crisscross, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get, this two is gonna go down here, this one down here, and we're gonna get Cu2 SO4. And in this case, when we do the crisscross, what do we get? Cu SO4. So in this case, remember, when we use the stock system name, we're gonna use the name of the metal, which is copper, the valence, which is plus one as a Roman numeral, and the name of the oxyanion, which in this case is sulfate. And last but not least, with the second one, again, copper. The valence that we use is two, or plus two, copper two sulfate. Sulfate. And that's it for the modern name. However, and let's circle this, this one, is this one and this one copper two is this one remember for the classic name we can always substitute the lower valence which is copper one we can substitute it for the word uh, cuprus so this would also be cuprus sulfate which is the name of the oxyanion and the name of the higher valence is going to turn into cupric sulfate and that's that's basically it for this naming style we're gonna do one last little example to see if you caught up with us 
and you got it. For example, aluminum plus three, we're gonna do, um, let's try chlorate. Chlorate is minus three, it's three with a negative one. So when we do the crisscross of the numbers, aluminum gets one, so we don't write it. ClO3, which is one block, is gonna be between parentheses, and this three is gonna come down here. And then this compound, since aluminum only has one valence, it's gonna be called, it only has a modern name, which is aluminum. And the name of the anion that we use, the oxyanion, is chlorate, okay? So this is it. Uh, check out on internet for some exercises on naming oxy salts, and I hope this video was helpful.